returns Sunday at noon Eastern on ABC. Telecast presented by GoDaddy.com. The suddenly compelling Eastern Conference Finals have returned to Boston for Game 6. The Magic were one loss away from a disastrous ending to their season. But after back-to-back -back victories while facing elimination, there's now talk of making history. The Celtics still hold a 3-2 series lead, but some banged-up bodies and perhaps a wounded psyche have the former champs a little off balance. Can the Celtics bounce back in advance over the Magic Force Game 7? been saying this for a long time and we've been doing it the last couple games we've got to win the effort game we've got to play harder than they do that's not the only thing but it's the first step and it's the most important and it's got to be every possession our defensive reputation is at stake tonight all right uh, if we get stops we will score oh, it's been a big oh, key the last two games right from the start our game Harder than them. It's in your hands. It's in your hands. Let's go, guys. A sellout crowd tonight at the TD Garden. They are ready. They might be a little nervous, but they're certainly ready as their Celtics playing their third straight game with a chance to advance to the finals. They're 0-2 so far, and a loss tonight would put them on the road for a game seven. Meanwhile, their opponent, the Orlando Magic, less than a week ago, they looked done. But two elimination games, two wins, renewed confidence, and they are ready to go here on the road in game six. Good evening, everyone, and welcome along with Mark Jackson and Jeff Van Gundy, Mike Green on hand, Doris Burke with us as well. It's amazing how momentum can change in a playoff series so quickly. Less than a week ago, one team was talking about sweeping. Now, there's talk about the other team doing something no other team in NBA history has done. Jeff, let's start with the Celtics. They're still leading the series up three games to two, but they're back on their heels a little bit. What's the key for them to regain what they have? Well, it's like Doc Rivers said in that pregame talk. They've got to reestablish themselves defensively and rebounding. And then offensively, their three perimeter players, Rondo, Allen, and Pierce, have to come through. Rondo's got to live in the lane. Allen's got to make his spot-up shots, and Pierce has got to create free-throw attempts. Meanwhile, for the Orlando Magic, before the series started, Doc Rivers said that Jameer Nelson was their most important player. Not their best, but most important. He's been proven true the last couple of games, Mark. Well, absolutely. Their smallest guy, but certainly their most fearless guy. You ask the Orlando Magic to a man, and they will say, when Jameer Nelson is playing well, we are playing well. Tough to beat. Pick and roll situation. Does a great job being patient. And then the pocket pass. Also, another pick and roll. Getting to the teeth of the defense. Force help to come. Three guys defend you. Make the right play. Pass it to a teammate. Now, when you come off and there's separation, your job is to make the play. Too much airspace, make them pay the price. Jameer Nelson has been outstanding. Struggled the first three games in this series, and then all of a sudden, took over. Became the most dominant player on the floor. Games four and five, a totally different guy. Not only scoring, but shooting a whopping 64% from the field and delivering the basketball. Meanwhile, Howard with two superb games, his team down all three, and he's come back strong with a vengeance with physical play, responding to the Celtics' physical play. It's been a hot topic last couple of days. 
As this team, as they always do, when the series goes six or seven, it becomes more emotional, more physical. You look at the starting lineups, what kind of game will Vince Carter bring the Magic? He has been invisible offensively the last couple. Meanwhile, Rajon Rondo, will he regain the form? The muscle spasms in his leg, he's not talking about, but perhaps that's made a difference as we're set to go for game six. Crowd on its feet. These two teams that had such a great playoff series last year in the conference semis. It was the same scenario. Orlando was down 3-2. They won game six on the road and then game seven here in Boston. Rondo looking. Ray Allen chased by Carter. And you see Kendrick Perkins in the game. The technical was rescinded, the second one he got. So he was not suspended one game, but he is one technical away from being suspended from the next one. Both of those technicals should have been rescinded, and the whole rule should be rescinded. Carter, shit, Ray Allen, the rebound. Meanwhile, the other injury news, Glenn Davis will play, Rashid Wallace will play, Rondo will play, and he banks it in. The Rondo-Nelson matchup has been fun to watch, Mark. You ought to be fun for you, a former All-Star point guard. Oh, well, you're watching two of the best, especially in pick-and-roll situations and in transition. They do a great job of scoring and then making plays for teammates. Matt Barnes driving in, draws the foul. And again, you can expect more physical play. You've got a good veteran crew. How tightly they call it early on. Push is going to be important in this game. There was been some flagrant fouls, a lot of pushing and shoving, but it's been great, tough physical playoff basketball. I got a fan here was upset saying that the Magic are playing dirty. My question to him, or my statement to him, was basically, oh, everything was fine the first three games. It's good physical basketball. The Magic have have been awakened, and all of a sudden they're playing physical and playing with force. And Dwight Howard has taken more hard hits in this series than anyone on Boston. And his, the ones he's taken, hasn't been inadvertent. They've tried to hit him hard. The other things that he's done, to me, have been inadvertent. That last foul on Boston was Perkins. Perkins has been playing, but he frequently gets in foul trouble. He's done a good job on Howard, for the most part, for this series. Pierce nearly taken. Shot clock down to five. Rondo looks back and sees the shot clock. Sets, fires a three. Knocks it down. Rondo, two buckets to begin the game. That is not his strength. You're absolutely right, Mike. That's not his strength. But give me a guy that's willing to compete no matter what, and he'll find a way to get it done. And another foul down the other end. Rondo shot 21% from three-point range during the regular season. It's just the competitive juices. Naturally, the reason why Rondo is spectacular is because people have questioned him all along. No doubt he's not a great jump shooter, but he is a guy that puts the time in and puts himself in position to make the defense pay. And he's put the time in, as we said, low percentage regular season, 40% in the playoffs. Well, and if you look at that shot, that shot is a much better stroke than just two years ago. I mean, that looks like it can go in. And right now we're seeing the Magic with their Achilles heel. Start the game, you draw two fouls, it's great, and you miss two of the three free throws. Garnett commits that foul, his first. And that being said about Rondo being a much improved jump shooter, teams are still going to force him to make jump shots before they're not going to make an adjustment. He's going to have to make jump shots and make teams pay. Pierce looking to post up Barnes. Barnes has played well the last couple of games at both ends of the floor. Tough spin move from Pierce, that won't go. And Howard the rebound. Look at Howard sprint down the floor and such a huge difference. It sounds silly to talk about the conference final, but just the energy and effort so much better for Orlando. Nice pass and Howard the finish. We can't talk enough about the adjustments made by Dwight Howard and especially Jameer Nelson. In pick and roll situations, that's a play he wasn't making the first three games of this series. On offense, Doc Rivers talking before the game. They want to start establishing Garnett again offensively. As we have defensive three seconds, so a technical foul, one shot for Boston. That was a key in the Cleveland series, Jeff, to establish Garnett in the post. They want to try and do that again. But the strategy is different. Orlando's trying to get around in front of Garnett and then put Dwight Howard behind him in a front and back situation, whereas Cleveland decided to play behind 
with Antoine Jameson, and he had a size length advantage. And he had an excellent series, so you see the difference. Again, it's, it's not about points with the Celtics because they share the wealth of such a balanced team, but they need better production from him. A well, better shooting percentage, 37% for a guy taking post-up shots and mid-range jumpers isn't good enough. And he's getting open shots. These are good looks. These are makeable shots for Kevin Garnett. Here's tough shot. Won't go, but draws the foul. It's going to go against Jameer Nelson, and Pierce who just keeps getting to the free throw line over and over again. He'll shoot two to start here. 46 free throws in the five games. Jameer Nelson once again finding himself defending Paul Pierce. Just a bad matchup for the Magic and Pierce keeping his foot on the gas pedal, putting pressure on the smaller defender. He was 10 for 10 from the line in game five. Had a lot of his points early. Not much in the second half, but misses the first there. I mean, you see all the free throws with the exception of game three. Double figures in each game in free throw attempts. But game three, the game was over about two and a half minutes in. <laughs> Early three-point cost and leads. At this point, home court is not such a huge deal with these two teams. They've proven they can win on the other team's floor. Howard left-handed flips it up. That won't go. Pierce grabs the rebound. That was an excellent entry pass by Vince Carter right there. Howard can't go away from the basket on his jump hooks. Rondo way short. Nelson again playing off him and pushing. Such a key the last couple of games is aggressive attacking style. This is that one. Rondo in the open floor. Count it and a foul. Seven early points for Rondo. You think about it in the past in game games that they had to win it was Pierce Allen or Garnett coming out it's spectacular this shows how different a team they are in 2010 it's the Rondo show and, and the, the players are going to have to adjust they are calling it extremely tight right now you cannot touch right now Rondo completes the three-point play and that was kind of expected with the way the game five went on just a subtle thing, Rondo's got five points already in transition. In the last few games, their, their transition game has been almost non-existent. Vince Carter offense has been non-existent the last couple of games. Pierce strips him of the ball that fell down on the baseline. And it's Orlando Ball. Mark Carter very quiet. Three points and eight points in the last two games. Is it important that they look to try and get him going? They've won without him being a big contributor offensively. Not about them looking to get him going. Vince Carter is a, is a big time scorer. It's about Carter and his mindset. He's got to get himself going. And I love that last move. Looking to attack Pete. And Howard attacks the rim again. But to me right there, a newspaper writer here in Boston said they've got to rambus him. They don't have to rambus Dwight Howard, but they can't avoid the contact and not make him make free throws. And a foul, offensive foul called on Garnett. And that's two on Kevin Garnett. Garnett obviously not happy, nor is Doc Rivers standing in Haynes, who is yelling at ref Mike Callahan before. They were going back and forth before the whistle was blown. But Garnett actually did it twice. Got away with the first one, and then Dwight Howard tells the referee, take a look at it. So he gets away with that one and then does it again. If you're Kevin Garnett, you have to be smart. There's clearly a foul. Callahan was watching it right from the start. He saw the beginning of it. I mean, you could make the case that Mike Callahan tried to give the guy a break. Callahan, one of the best officials in the NBA. He's the crew chief tonight. As Lewis drive shot won't go. Nice tip in from Rashard Lewis, who's played two solid games in four and five in this series. He's a different player, a totally different player, looking to be aggressive, looking to put the ball on the floor and taking his shots. Rondo to Perkins. Howard knocks it away and then tips it to a teammate. Here's Jameer Nelson, side steps. Lewis fakes the three. Alley up to Howard. Another beautiful setup. Three dunks already for Howard. But you look at how he's running the floor. This is how he's got to play. He's got a speed advantage over Kendrick Perkins. Use it. And another nice pass to set him up for the high percentage shot. You see Glenn Davis in the game. 
And a defensive three seconds called on Howard, so another technical foul. You see Glenn Davis in the game. This is the play that happened. The elbow comes down, whacked him. Not only did he suffer a concussion, he lost a tooth. Doc Rivers wasn't saying, come on, get going, not realizing how hurt he was. And then we saw how the concussion can affect him. He was medically cleared. There's no time limit that he can play. Doctors say he's fine. He says he's fine. I'm glad that he's fine because he was certainly looking like Trevor Verbeck against Mike Tyson. So give him credit. The guy knew he was out of it and tried to battle through it. Got up and tried to make a play getting back. Meanwhile, Marquise Daniels, the other Celtic who suffered a concussion late in that game, he will not play tonight, not suited up. So Brian Scalabrini was activated for tonight's game. Shot clock down to seven. Pierce can't connect. Pierce often in home clinching playoff games, he's had some of his best playoff performances in these type of situations. At 32 in game four, but the Celtics lost that one in overtime. Something we saw clearly in the last game with Sean Lewis posting up Paul Pierce and taking advantage of that matchup. That was great poise and patience by Lewis. Cleared Vince Carter out of there, said, I got Paul Pierce, let me back him down. Last year, when they played that matchup, he used it well, too. Ray Allen from downtown. And after Orlando briefly took their first lead, Boston back up two. Nelson, a oh, clear path to the basket. He was talking early in the series. He was worried about getting everyone involved. He's just worried about being an aggressive attacking point guard. He's done a great job the last two plus games. And when he plays that way, it's so much easier for everybody else on the floor. Not just himself, but everybody else will get space because he's aggressive. Perkins passing out for Pierce. That's a three. Back to back threes for Boston. They've got three for three from downtown already. Lewis with a good look. Won't go. Rondo the rebound. And he got fouled by Carter. And we'll have a timeout. The three-pointer is such a weapon for Orlando, certainly in game five. Here for Boston in game six. And it starts with Ray Allen making the first good pass to force rotation. Jameer Nelson too small to impact Paul Pierce's release. He's got to contest much harder. We'll never get an opportunity like this again. What's the worst that can happen? It's coming out. It's not due for months. It's slippery. Ah! It's aging fast. What did you expect when you made it? Didn't you have a plan? We changed the rules. Huh? Cross the line. What's the worst that could happen? Where is it? Splice. Rated R. Starts June 4th. This summer, go to your local retailer and pick up specially marked packages of Corona and Corona Light. If you find a custom-wrapped Corona bottle inside, you could win a Corona Beach getaway of your own. It's Toyota's national sales event. The perfect time to get an amazing deal on the Toyota you've always wanted. Toyota's been named best overall brand value of any full-line manufacturer. And with many award-winning models, it's easy to see why. Like the 2010 Camry. Once again, the best-selling car in America. And for a limited time, get a free auto maintenance package when you buy or lease any new Toyota. Toyota's national sales event going on now. Hurry to your Toyota dealer today. I get calls. Jack, you sell Hondas? We sell Hyundais. But it's a lot more car for a lot less money. Spring has sprung, and Fitzgerald is celebrating with two exciting lease offers. Drive a brand new 2010 Elantra, nicely equipped for only $139 a month. Or choose the all new 2011 Sonata, pay only $169 a month. So you can't go wrong with a Hyundai, particularly at the prices we charge. That's the Fitz way. The Fitz way. There's just no better way to go. Previously on Toyota Sports Connection. We know it's going to be a battle and a fight from start to finish. You're facing tough pitchers every night. I'm, you know, I'm glad I'm not facing our pitching staff. I, I would like to keep last year, let it be last year. 
They just keep grinding it out, man. Everything that I've gone through has, has helped me grow up and helped me mature. Gentlemen, start your engine. Nobody covers local sports like we do. Hardcore. Toyota Sports Connection, live every night at 11, only on Bright House Sports Network, Channel 47. Welcome back to Boston, a city with a proud, but at times, tortured sports tradition. And in the wake of the Boston Bruins' recent collapse in the Stanley Cup playoffs, the normally hardy New Englanders are fearing the worst from the storm coming at them from the general direction of Orlando. Doc Rivers says he completely understands. I don't have to bring it up. Uh, they'll be asked a hundred times about the Bruins. Uh, they'll be asked about the Red Sox coming back. Um, you know, I've said it a hundred times, you know, we, we have great history in this town. Uh, some of it is good and some of it is bad. The problem is our fans remember both uh, and they use it uh, when they need to use it. Uh, right now they're using the bad part. Both coaches, though, Stan Van Gundy and Doc Rivers, in their pregame press conference made a point of saying, listen, history, ancient or recent, has nothing to do with tonight. The bottom line is the team who will win tonight will be the team that plays better basketball, Mike. Well, certainly, Doris, but the fans, they've been talking about a nonstop. The pain from that collapse when the Bruins just starting to subside, although the wounds are still open. Mark, as a player, are these things... Does it ever get to a play? Do you think about these things? Because it's all that's been talked about by the fans. It doesn't come into play. The bottom line is you're you're in a battle. That's a good defense by the Orlando Magic. So as a player, you don't think about it. Matter of fact, you're down 3-0. You're thinking, well, I don't care what the numbers say. I wasn't part of the numbers. I'm not part of the history. I know I am today. And then you think, okay, we're down 3-1. Now the numbers increase, and then it's 3-2. So you scratch history and you make your own history. Well, and I even think people saying this is Boston's game seven. Are you kidding me? You don't think they, they could go down to Orlando and win a game seven? That's ridiculous. Uh, both teams, as we said earlier, they're such good road teams. They've already proven they're such evenly matched teams, two well-coached teams. It'd almost be fitting for it to go to game seven. Now, obviously, the odds usually favor the home team in game seven, but clearly either of these teams can win on, on the road. But you can't blame the fans because there's been statements from the Celtics themselves saying this is like game seven. But I think that, I, I just think it's ridiculous. Nelson throws it up top of the backboard, is inbounds. Howard draws the foul and he puts it in. Howard stays with it. The Celtics saying that it hit up top. As long as it just hit the top of the backboard, that's inbounds. If it hit anything behind it, like the camera or the shot clock, that's out of bounds. But it can't go over. That's a legal play right there on the pass. Wow. That's fine. That's all legal. It never hit anything but the top of the backboard. That's ultimate offense by accident. <laughs> Absolutely. But, but they've got to wrap Dwight Howard up harder. I don't understand why they're touch fouling him right now. Rondo with his first foul. Howard misses the free throw and Rashard Lewis tips it out. But once again, Jameer Nelson, once Rondo switch on the Dwight Howard, your job is to get the ball towards the rim. Allow Howard to do the rest. Nelson again to the basket. Ah, off the glass. And Glenn Davis the rebound. The key for Orlando last two games, they've come out strong. They've had 31 points in the first quarter in both games four and five. After struggling early, offensive foul on Davis. And that's clearly an offensive foul. As he turns and pivots, he does it with force and goes right into the body of Rashad Lewis. I mean, clearly, this is good position, but trying to do too much. Certainly went into the body of Lewis and gets the offensive foul. Crowd a bit ornery right now with the last couple of calls as Carter misfires and Carter just continues to struggle in this series shooting the basketball and those are good looks he's got to convert those Davis will try a jumper way off the mark now Carter actually shot the ball decently first couple but the last two games five and a half points a game 21 percent shooting stolen by Pierce now Rondo has a three on two Rondo right to the basket Smart play, defense kept backing up, he kept going right at him. Looking to attack as the defense retreated, he did a great job of getting to the cup. Lewis to Howard, Perkins one-on-one coverage. Howard throws up a brick, Pierce the rebound. 
Ray Allen charging. Perkins wants the ball, but Carter is guarding him. Nice pass to Davis. And a foul on Howard. First on Howard. At some point defensively, you got to stop the basketball in transition. As the turnover, Rondo does a good job getting the basketball and then defense retreating. At some point, you got to meet him at the foul line. You don't, you allow him to get all the way to the cup. And Rondo, a big time finisher at the point guard position. Orlando will call timeout. That's just their first turnover. It was a problem, a real problem, the first four games of this series. They've done a much better job. Rondo off to a strong start. Celtics by three. It's Toyota's national sales event. The perfect time to get an amazing deal on the Toyota you've always wanted. Toyota's been named best overall brand value of any full-line manufacturer. And with many award-winning models, it's easy to see why. Like the 2010 Camry. Once again, the best-selling car in America. And for a limited time, get a free auto maintenance package when you buy or lease any new Toyota. Toyota's national sales event going on now. Hurry to your Toyota dealer today. This Tuesday. Do you believe in curses? <laughs> the legend comes to life on DVD and Blu-ray. It's not safe here. Oh, the unrated director's cut. The beast will have its day. The Wolfman unrated. <laughs> this week at a great low price. People do some crazy things to stay healthy. Like sleeping in hyperbaric chambers. Doing that hot yoga till they pass out. Or wrapping their bodies in cheese to heal wounds? <laughs> Me? Hmm. I like to keep it real simple by drinking vitamin water triple X. The vitamins and antioxidants help support a healthy body, so I don't have to do nothing too crazy, like extreme aromatherapy. What? See ya. I'm on the pursuit of happiness, and I know everything... This is Ryan, a State Farm agent. Ryan loves to talk about how calling State Farm could get you discounts up to 40%. And we could... But talk to your neighbors first. Chances are there's some of State Farm's 40 million drivers. So talk to your neighbors, then call a State Farm agent. Like me. Like him. Pierce puts it up for the win. Knocks it down. Oh, he scores. Out to Ginobili for three. Oh! The intensity in this series is incredible. We eked out a victory. You know, we had a lot of guys that played like dogs. Nobody really gave us a chance. I mean, he's a great player. I'm playing for something bigger than myself. Catch all the live post-game press conferences throughout the playoffs on NBA TV. At this stage, you really just gotta win games. Releasing a sand turns back time. In 2008, they united in Boston with one purpose, an NBA title. And in the Eastern Conference Finals, not even a 10-point deficit could stand in destiny's way. What a great victory for the Celtics. In the finals, the Celtics toppled the rival Lakers for an 18th NBA title. Now, Boston chases a similar fate. The gods have a plan for you. Boston Celtics trying to get back to the NBA Finals. Only the Lakers have been there more. A victory tonight, and it'll be the 21st time they would play for the league championship. Well, they've got their work cut out for them. Right now, leading by three. 331 remaining first quarter here in game six, and Glenn Davis will shoot free throws. Can I throw out my Bill Russell stat of the night? Yep. Five-time MVP. Three-time first-team All-NBA. How can you be an MVP and not be first-team All-NBA? <laughs> well, Will Chamberlain is playing in the same t at the same time, I guess. No, Mike, that makes no sense. Well, but I'm just telling. I'm, I'm not saying it makes sense. I'm just saying that's probably the reason. If you're the MVP, you're first team. You have to be. It sounds like Mike had a vote. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not that old. By the way, speaking of numbers, I want to give congratulations. A huge milestone for Stan Van Gundy the other night. The victory in game five. As Howard gets inside, stolen by Rondo. We'll get back to that in a moment. Rondo drives. Reflected out of bounds. The victory in game five, his 45th career playoff victory, surpassing Jeff Van Gundy's 44 playoff victories. He owns the and I have to say life. this, I have to say this, in much, many fewer games, too. So his percentage is also higher. But I will say this, Stan, the party's not over. My guy will be back someday, and he's coming for those numbers. 
Perkins inside Davis. And Davis gets it to go. After all that's happened this year, with all the coaches being fired after winning seasons, why you two guys want to get into coaching is beyond me. Hey, you're, you're, who's, talk, who's talking about that? I'm just talking about living. <laughs> get busy diet, get busy living. Get a little Shawshank. Uh. <laughs> you got to. Celtics up by five. Ray Allen blocked by Howard. Now it's done a terrific job in shot blocking the last couple of games. Come on, you got to give credit. I mean, we just, that was a throwaway graphic, but when you look at the accomplishments of both of those guys, as far as Jeff and Stan, outstanding job, and their parents and family should be extremely proud. Hey, you know what? That means we coach good players. Pierce gets in. Spoken like Phil Van Gundy. Celtics back up by seven. Two and a half remaining opening period. Nelson, like a water park, through the lane. Offensive foul. Ray Allen drawing the charge. A second on Nelson. That's an unusual call. Smart play from Allen. Well, not as unusual as Allen sold it well. But as you said, Jeff, and we expected this, it's going to be a tightly called game with the way game five finished up. But see, to me, that's not really tightly called. That's just rewarding flopping. There's a difference between tightly called and flopping. And I, I just don't like to see flops rewarded. Rondo to Perkins. Blocked from behind by Lewis. Rashad Lewis has done a good job doing other things besides scoring when he was really struggling shooting the ball early. Drives left-handed, won't go, gets the rebound. Back up, won't go again. And Davis comes out of the pack. Perkins struggling with the ball. See Michael Petrus in the game on Pierce. Rondo wants it. Allen off the screen. Shot clock at six. Rondo saying get out of the way. Rondo hoist up the three. And a loose ball foul call on J.J. Redick. That's the 15th foul. And Ray Allen will go to the free throw line. Now we got a second. Tell you about the upcoming coverage tomorrow night. Game six of the Western Conference Finals. They're back in Phoenix. Suns will try and tie it up. What a magnificent game last night at the Staples Center with a thrilling finish. And ESPN on Sunday. If Orlando wins tonight, there'll be a game seven down at Amway Arena. 8.30 start Eastern. And then the NBA Finals will start Thursday on ABC. Game one. Of course, last night, this was the play. Kobe Bryant with two guys on him takes a wild shot. And Ron Artest, the man of the hour, on the follow. Second time in the playoffs, a Kobe Bryant miss in the final seconds and a follow by a teammate. Gasol did it against Oklahoma City. Results in a Laker win. An interesting thing the debate was Ron Artest shooting the wide open three a little over 50 seconds to go in the ball game, up three. I have no problem with that shot at all because he was wide open. Why run the clock down to get a similar shot? He's a shooter. As long as you put the time in, be aggressive. They shoot Wallace in the game. Shot clock at six. Reddick fires. Too strong. Ball tipped by Lewis. But it goes right to Rondo. Rondo, nice pass to Pierce. Perfect timing. And the Celtics have a 10-point lead. And you see that Tom Petras, instead of grabbing the ball, he pushes it. And Rondo continues to be the best player on the floor. Howard. Foul. A couple of guys could have been called for that, I think, as Howard would go to the line. You set this break up because you're looking to push and score. All of a sudden now, you're looking to make a play. No look pass to a running guy on the wing, filling the lane. Great job by Rondo, but also by Pierce. And Boston's offense, best offense, has been in transition so far tonight. The Magic's half-court defense is good. Their transition defense has to get better. And that's the first time I've seen Dwight Howard spin baseline and then step through. 
that evolution would really help him. The foul was on Pierce. Howard way off on the free throw. He goes into his move. He stopped, shot fake, stepped through because Rasheed Wallace had been timing up that spin. Very good play by Howard. Go Orlando, after shooting very well from the free throw line in game five, just two of six to start here tonight. And Doc Rivers right now organizing a quick two for one. Wants Rondo to push the ball, wants to spread the floor, and wants to get a quick shot so they have another opportunity before this quarter ends. Rondo has been the catalyst here in the first quarter. Drives again to the layup. And he goes down hard. He hurt himself. He has been fearless going to the basket. One of the smallest guys on the floor, not afraid, but he paid the price right there. As Jason Williams is called for the foul. We've seen too much of this in this series. Guys down and not been able to get up right away. Let's watch and listen to the play. You hope you land on the fleshy part there, but by the way he reacted, you know, right on that side. Eddie Lassert once again out there. Celtics by nine, but their man is down. Heel pressure. High arches. People everywhere are discovering what's going on with their feet. Dr. Scholl's Custom Fit Orthotic Center. Backed by foot care scientists, its foot mapping technology identifies the areas you put pressure on, then recommends the right orthotic. For locations, see drscholls.com. Go, go! Are you sure the parachute was packed right? Sometimes probably doesn't cut it. That's why Valvoline guarantees your engine up to 300,000 miles. Sign up at Valvoline.com. See, Rondo is up, shaken up. He's going to go to the free throw line. He has to take the free throw. Otherwise, if they had somebody substitute because he was unable to, he would not be able to return to the game. The only time that happens is on a flagrant foul. That wasn't a flagrant, but man, right away. Shaken up. Is Doc Rivers concerned about his all star point guard? And we saw in the previous game where a player was hurt, they committed the foul to get him off the floor. So all of a sudden, the Celtics don't have a foul to give. So with 32 seconds to go in this quarter, you cannot take that foul without sacrificing two foul shots to get Ron out of the game. And I'll say this in regards to that rule, maybe we could scale that back to the last four minutes of the game. Where a guy doesn't have to take the free throw, he doesn't have to take the free throws. Because if a guy's legitimately hurt, he should be able to go out and get treatment. The reason they do that is they feel too many teams would take advantage of a guy with a bad free throw shooter with fake being yeah, hurt. Late, so they they would. Guy. late they would, but not early. We could do it all the time. What if what, what, what Harris could do it a lot? When you'd be out the next possession, they get scored on every time. Rennick flips it up. Short. Rasheed Wallace the rebound. Shot clock turned off, and the crowd getting on its feet here at the TD Garden. Rondo. And that will end the first quarter. The Boston Celtics off to a strong start, especially Rajon Rondo with the 12 points. Getting to the basket also had three assists, didn't turn it over. He's shaking up right now. Boston shooting 50% from the field. First quarter complete here in game six. Celtics an 11 point lead. Look who's going for the three. To infinity. And beyond. Yes. Toy Story 3. From Disney Pixar. Yes. Yes. Welcome to Sunnyside. Wah. They're going where no Toy Story has gone before. You lost. You and your friends ain't ever getting out of here. It was cold and dark. Nothing but sand and a couple of Lincoln Logs. Hey, uh, I don't think those were Lincoln Logs. Toy Story 3. Rated G in Disney Digital 3D and IMAX 3D. Starts June 18th. Hey, I'm David. The other day I was hanging with my roommates and I was thinking, mowing down zombies is cool and all, but I kind of want to know what they're like on the inside. 
Then Windows 7 comes out, and now I can stream internet stuff wirelessly from the PC to there. The zombie forms a loving bond with his fellow man-eater, the Great White. Suddenly, the dead don't seem so dead to me. I'm a PC, and Windows 7 was my idea. Live on your TV, online, and on your phone. An available 315 horsepower 5.3 liter V8. 21 highway NPG. And a heart of chrome. The GMC Sierra Chrome Essentials Package. Get 0% APR for 72 months on Sierra Half Tons. Rated a Consumer's Digest Best Buy. Or choose 5,000 cash back on most Sierras. You want it all. Style, comfort, performance, reliability, and safety. And you want a great value. You don't have to compromise when you're car shopping. Get it all at Loki Kia. Right now, take up to $10,000 off our great selection of new Kias. Only at Loki Kia. Choose from a huge selection of new Kias. Sorento, Soul, Sportage, Forte, Optima. You name it, we've got it. $10,000 off. Plus, all Kias come with a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. Get it all at Loki Kia today. Under the giant American flag.